Don't be blocking. Right. Okay. Got it? So what's this? Massive. Yes, Next. Temporalis. Of course, the temporalis is pretty easy as well. Where do you think the temporalis is? It covers the temporal. I think that's probably the easiest to identify. Why? Because it's, well, right there. Right? Right there. So, I mean, it's pretty Digastric. Digastric. Now, the digastric goes from here to here, like this. Here to here. So on this model, it would be this and this. See where I'm putting my finger? This and this. On this side, you can see it as well. It'd be this and this. See the digastric. It's called the digastric because it has two middle parts. Even though it's one muscle, it's one muscle that looks like it's stapled or anchored. So it looks like it's almost like two separate muscles, but it's one. It's just one that's strapped down. Now the middle of the muscle is called the belly or the body. So digastric, two bellies. Gastric means stomach, so it's like two stomachs, right? So there's one part here and one part here. So this is the digastric. Underneath the digastric, deep to the digastric, so the digastric goes here, right? Well, if this is the muscle here, directly underneath it, so here's the digastric, directly underneath it, if you're going to go from superficial to deep, that would be the mylohyoid. Okay? So this muscle right here, so this is the digastric, this muscle right here is the mylohyoid. See, it's underneath the, it's deep to the digastric. So the digastric goes like this, and the mylohyoid goes like this. It's right there. Right underneath it, what is it? Oh, yeah. Sternocleidomastoid. I'm going to show you when we do the cat dissections, right? So we're just doing human and model right now. Yes? Sternocleidomastoid. So sternocleidomastoid. The sternocleidomastoid is this muscle right here. The neck muscle it goes like this. In fact, see right here. It's this muscle right here. It's pretty easy because it goes sternum, clavicle. That's where you get the sternocleido. And then it goes to the mastoid process right here. So sternocleidomastoid. It's built into the name. In fact, if you look at the origin insertion, it says manubrium, right? Instead of manubrium, why don't you just say sternum, right? Isn't the manubrium part of the sternum? So sterno, clido, clido means clavicle, so sternum, clavicle to the, now you could say the temporal bone, but mastoid process is on the temporal bone and it's in the name, so why don't you just say it's from the sternum and clavicle to the mastoid process. That way, sterno, clido, mastoid, it's already built in and you already know what it is. So for that one, is it hard to memorize the origin insertion? No, it's built into the name, you know? Sterno, sternum, clido, clavicle, to the mastoid process. So where were we now? Uh, sternohyoid. Sternohyoid! All right. So, actually, this is probably my favorite one for this one. Yes. Okay, so what does it sound like? Sternohyoid, from the sternum to the hyoid bone. So it's this one that goes from the sternum to the hyoid bone. See how that goes, sternohyoid? Hmm, I wonder what its origin is. <laughs> Tell me. Sternum. I wonder what the insertion is. Hyoid. Hyoid, Woo. how about that? Sternohyoid. So, was that hard to memorize? No. Sternothyroid. Sternum. And this goes to this part right here. This is called the thyroid cartilage of your larynx. So sternum to the thyroid cartilage of your larynx is the sternothyroid. I just go thyroid cartilage. So you, or you can go to the larynx if you want, either way. But it, since it's built into the name sternothyroid, you might as well go thyroid cartilage. It'll help you remember, right? We got thyroid. Juno. No, no. Oh, oh yeah. Genioid. The geniohyoid is Genio deep to the mylohyoid. If you haven't noticed, on these models, sometimes you have something superficial, then they rip it off so you can see underneath, that's deep. Obviously, you know, to see deeper, they remove all these mus muscles here, right? So one side is superficial, the other side is deep. 
So on this side, they removed the digastric and the mylohyoid so you can see the muscle underneath. And the muscle underneath is the geniohyoid. Because, see, it's going to the hyoid bone right here. So you have the digastric, you have the mylohyoid, and deep to that, you have the genio. You didn't do the uh, thyrohyoid. Oh, thyrohyoid. Which is from here to here. Thyrohyoid. So this is the sternohyoid, sternothyroid, thyrohyoid. From the thyroid cartilage to the hyoid, right? So these ones actually are pretty easy. Sternohyoid, sternothyroid, thyrohyoid. You can't really tell from the genio, you know, where it is except for the hyoid part, right? But you can tell these ones is exactly where they are. So those ones especially, you know, in your head. Next. Trapezius. Trapezius, okay. The trapezius, of course. Is this right here? Do not confuse trapezius with what? Trapezoid or um, trapezium, remember? Mm -hmm. We learned this. Those would be bones. If you write that, I can't give you credit. It's the trapezius. Then on this side, they removed the trapezius so you can see underneath it. So this one here is trapezius. Actually, this one's probably easier because they're color coded. Okay. So this one's like and then if you remove latissimus dorsi that would be this this is your latissimus dorsi it's like your wings like this right here goes big muscle here goes to here very easy Rombo rhombodius there are actually different rhomboidius there's rhomboidius major rhomboidius minor these are the rhomboidius muscles which one do you think is major and which one do you think is minor? This is and this one. Which one do you think would be the major? Which one would you think would be the minor? Big one is major, small one Big is minor. Big one is major, small one is minor. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> Big one is major. Levator scapula. Levator scapula. Yeah. This would be the levator scapula. Its job is to raise the scapula. See, imagine if I were to contract a muscle, what would happen? It's attached to this. If I contract it, one, it raises this, and this is your scapula. So, levator scapula. I wonder what the function is. Right? So, some of them, like, you have to think about the words. Think about, and, and a lot of it is told to you, you know what I mean? Levator scapula. Okay. That would be this. Levator scapula. Levator scapula. Um, pectoralis major. Pectoralis major. Okay, we need that. This would be the pectoralis major, chest muscle. Very easy. And if you were to rip that off, and look underneath, you know what you see? Pectoralis minor. So pectoralis major, underneath this, so you can't see it if this is in place, but underneath this, you get the pectoralis minor. See how? Um, serratus uh, anterior. Iding is only part of it, remember. Origin, insertion, action, but they're not too hard. Look at them. A few words apiece, just don't confuse them. Yes, what? Serratus anterior. Serratus anterior, that's pretty easy. Serratus means saw-like. So all of these things here, see how it looks like little serrations or saw-like things? That's the serratus anterior. It's really easy. It's very visible in the model. Put it out in your model. My, very good. Ooh, and the paper clip. <laughs> well Put it out in your model, Lance. Very good. See? Keep looking. Serratus anterior. Very easy. It's like very noticeable, right? It looks like... Deltoid. Deltoid. Okay. So the deltoid is your shoulder muscle. Now in the cat, there are three separate muscles, and yes, you do have to know them separately. 
But in the human, there's only one, and it's this. So this looks like a whole bunch, but it's just one. One big shoulder muscle. What is that called? Deltoid. Deltoid. Supraspinatus. Supraspinatus. Now, if you look here, this is the scapula. This is called the what of the scapula? Spine. Spine. So we have the supraspinatus. Supra means above, above the spine. Supraspinatus. And what do you think we call this one? Infraspinatus. So above the spine, supra. Below the spine, infraspinatus. Terrace major. So this is the what muscle? Scaling. Deltoid. So I'm going to remove the deltoid, okay? Okay. So this would be the supraspinatus, this is the infraspinatus, and this here is the teres major. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres major. You don't have to know the teres minor, just the teres major. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres major. What do you think this would be? Yes, but you don't need to know it. Just this one, this one, and this one, right? Yes. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and what's this? Teres major. Scapularis. Underneath the scapula, Ta-da! Subscapularis. So you can't see it from this way because it's underneath the scapula. Sub means under. So if you were to go like this from superficial to deep, underneath, that would be the subscapularis. 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 What's underneath here? Subscapularis. You do know that there is a price for videotaping, right? <laughs> I'm not kidding. If you videotape, you have to send me a link. Link to it. Okay? If you do not, I'm going to put a mark by your name and I will uh, deduct all your attendance to participate. 100 points. What did you ask me? Next? Tricep brachii. That's it? Oh, we're ready to. Okay. Tricep brachii. Tricep brachii are these muscles. They, of course, make you extend your arm. So this right here is the what? Tricep brachii. And of course, on this side, everyone knows this one biceps brachii. And in between the two, you have your brachialis. Biceps brachii, triceps brachii, and in between the two? Brachialis. Brachialis. Laterally? Yeah. It's actually lateral and medial. It's, it's oh. underneath. Okay. So this is it, and this is it. So what is this? Biceps brachii. And this is the? Trish. Brachialis. And this Brachialis. Triceps. You get it? Got it? It's external intercostal. External intercostal. If you look here, you can see that there's some fibers going this way and some going this way. Intercostal means between the ribs. So we have external and internal. The one that's more superficial is external and then internal. So external intercostals, internal intercostals. Rectus abdominis. Rectus abdominis. Rectus means straight. So straight muscle in the abdomen, this is your six pack. Or in this case, like eight pack or... But after a while, of course, it becomes a whole keg. Right? Six pack. If you're drinking too many six packs, it's a keg. <laughs> right? What's this? Rectus. Rectus abdominis. It's one muscle. It's just like anchored. So what's this? Rectus. Rectus, straight, like erect. Straight muscle, doesn't look pretty straight. What's this called? Rectus, Rectus abdominis. abdominis. You got it. External abdominal oblique. External abdominal oblique. Okay. So we have this right here, which is the external abdominal oblique. Oblique means slanted. External, it's outside, abdominal, and oblique. Externally, it's the most superficial. 
abdominal area and oblique, right? This is horizontal, this is vertical, slanted is oblique. So this is the what? External, abdominal, oblique. Okay. Uh, transverse abdominus. I didn't make you do the internal? No. Well, this is the external. If you remove the external, what's underneath? Internal. Now, what's deep to this is the transverse abdominus. So, it actually goes underneath here. And how can you tell? Look at the direction of this. Isn't this going this way? What is this plane? Transverse plane. So you see, these ones are slanted. External, then you remove that, then you get internal. But then this one goes like this. So what's this? Transverse abdominus. Okay? Internal, internal. You can see it here. This one's color coded. Point out the transverse. Yeah. See? It's easy to tell. Yep. All of those. What is it? Point. All of that is the transverse. Oh, what are, we, what are you asking? Transverse abdominus. Okay, so you see external abdominal oblique, internal abdominal oblique, and then the transverse abdominus. And then you can see a muscle here. What is this muscle? That's part of the rectus mm -hmm. abdominus. See how it goes straight up and down? That's the other side of this. Okay, the extensor dorsi communis, uh, well in the human it's the rector spinae. Let me tell you, you do not have to identify them. You don't have to identify them, so I'm not going to ask you that. You only have to know several facts about it. One fact is that it's actually a group of muscles made out of, it's, it's a set made out of three groups of muscles. The three groups is the iliocostalis, the longissimus, and the spinalis. Okay, so if I ask you a question like what three groups of muscles make up the erector spinae, what would you say? Longissimus muscles, iliocostalis muscles, and the spinalis muscles. Mm -hmm. And then you have to know their function as a group. You do not have to know origin insertions for that. Do not have to know, so you don't have to ID it, you don't have to know origin insertion, you just have to know that it's a set made out of three groups. What are the three groups? Iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis. It's also in the blue book, by the way. If you look at it. And we call it the rector spine, and then you have to know their function. What do you think the function of the erector spine is? Make you stand up. Erect and straight, it straightens your back. Now, if this is flexing, what do you think this is? Extends, so it extends your vertebral column. Right, but remember to reduce an angle is flexing. So if I'm going like this, I'm flexing, right? So if this is my spine, I'm going like this, I'm, am I not reducing the angle? Flexing. So the rector spinae make you go straight up, which would be extending. So it extends your vertebral column. So know them as a group, the three, three muscles that make up that set, and then know their function. What's the function? Get your back Extends straight. what? Vertebral column, right? That's all you need to know for that one. Do you have to know any other origins, insertions, or anything for that one? No. Do you have to ID it? No. What do you have to know? Made out of three muscle groups and and the function, which is extend the vertebral column. That's different than the spinal cord. The vertebral column is the bones. The spinal cord is within that, right? Can we all understand? Is that one even easier? Once again, don't have to identify that either, just, but you do have to know the origin, insertion, and action. And for semispinalis, it's only the semispinalis capitis. Once again, you don't have to identify it. So none of these three you have to identify, um, you know, like I won't show you on a model or a cap. But you do have to know the origin, insertion, and action. But for the rector spinae, you don't have to know the origin and insertion, you just have to know the three groups and the function. You got it? Okay. So moving on. Tensor fis, fis Tensor yeah. fascia latte. Yeah. <laughs> Not cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> this is your tensor fascia latte. Well, singular would be lactate. 
latte would technically be both. Where? So these are your tensor fascia latte. This is a tensor fascia latte. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right here. Here, look over here. This. See this muscle? Right here? What is that? The tensor, tensor fascia latte. <laughs> <laughs> Maximum, uh, glute, gluteus maximus. Gluteus maximus. <laughs> what? <laughs> gluteus medius is this one right here. So the gluteus medius will be this one. Well, it's actually not only on top, it's, it's all this, then the gluteus maximus. Gluteus medius. Can we see There's also here? a gluteus minimus, but you don't need to know that. You just have to know the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius. What's this? Maximus, what's this? Medius. Medius. There so, is a minimus, but you do not have to know the minimus. All you have to know is the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius. If you put minimus, that's an actual different muscle that you don't have to cut. Gluteus maximus, gluteus medius. For this. So, gluteus maximus, here is the biceps femoris. Uh, the biceps femoris, uh, the semimembranosus and the semitendinosus, they make up what's called your hamstrings. Have you heard of your hamstrings? Mm -hmm. There you go. So, biceps femoris, semimembranosus, and then on top of that is the semitendinosus. So it's lateral. Which one? The, the biceps femoris? Yeah. Yes. In the back of it, it's lateral. And there's the tendon part, which is this different color. This? Yeah. Yeah, all of this. Sartorius. Sartorius. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The IG. All right. <laughs> this would be the sartorius. It's like a crisscross muscle here. See this? Looks like a little ribbon that crisscrosses all around. What is this? Sartorius. And we got the quadriceps femoris. The quadriceps femoris are these four muscles here, your quads. Uh, actually, you can't see the fourth one because it's underneath, but this is called the rectus femoris because it's straight. Then the one that's uh, the side is the vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis. There's actually a vastus intermedialis, but that's inside. You don't need to know that. You only have to know three of the four quadriceps. What are they? Rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, and vastus medialis. Gracilis. Gracilis, that's the inner thigh right here is the gracilis, see this? This is the sartorius, and this right here is the gracilis. What? I'm pointing it right here. <laughs> what's this? Sartorius, what's this? Gracilis. Okay. Uh, a doctor longus. A doctor longus would be right here. Pretty easy to see. And a doctor femoris. Also, it's sometimes called the ductor magnus. That would be this one right here. So this is this is the adductor longus. This is the adductor femoris. Also, sometimes called the ductor magnus. Okay. Gastrocnemius. That would be this one right here. That's you know your calf muscle. And then deep to that, if I were to remove this, underneath here is the soleus. See? So the gastronemius is here, gastrocnemius is here, and then here would be the soleus underneath. And the tibialis anterior is, as you can imagine, <laughs> anterior to the tibia. So if this is the tibia, this is anterior, this is the tibialis anterior. By the way, notice that in this part, there's not a muscle covering here, it's just skin which is why it hurts so much when you hit here. This is your shin, right? Because mm -hmm. there's not a big muscle protection here. So there's this part right there. So you can feel your bone right there. 
That's why it hurts, right? Have you ever hit your shin? Yeah. Feels like hell. What about when you have shin splints? Uh, that's uh, like overuse of it. So like it's, it's like a tendonitis. And okay.